Are you ready for the word of the Lord? So, uh, what we do each year, towards the end of each year, is uh, take some time just to listen to the Lord, saying, God, what are you speaking to us uh, as a church uh, that will give us a direction uh, and set our expectation for the year ahead? And we bring that, uh, in the past, we've been doing it on the New Year's Eve service, so th- we bring it on today, we bring it on the New Year's Day uh, service, as the word of the Lord for this year. Now, uh, just a few uh, disclaimers, so to speak. Uh, this is not a prophetic word for the body of Christ all over the world. Right? That's not what we're doing. We are, uh, we are responsible for our congregation, so we're bringing it more as a word that God is speaking to us as we are journeying together. And for those who are connected to us, so there may be uh, our outreach churches and pastors and others who connect here and that they, they look forward in anticipation with the word of the Lord so that all our ministry and everything that's done is geared uh, along these lines. So this is not the word of the Lord to the body of Christ everywhere. It's for us as a congregation, as a community uh, that we're journeying together. Uh, and secondly, also just want to make uh, this disclaimer that this is not the only thing God is speaking. Amen. We live by the Word of God. That's very clear. And throughout the year, uh, we go, we study the Word, uh, and we, 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 we grow and nurture ourselves in the Word of God. So this is a direction. You know, it is a word, a focus, if you will, that God is bringing our attention to for 2020. As we wait on God and say, God, what are you telling us? What do you want us to focus on? Where do you want, to put our, what, where do you want us to put our energies? What should we expect? This is a word, not the only word. Amen? But... It does give us a lot of direction and focus um, uh, where we should put our energies to. So that's what we're going to do. To make it a little bit dramatic, if you could like, if you could please stand <laughs> as I just announce the word of the Lord uh, for us for uh, 2020. As we wait on God and just say, God, what are you saying? Here's uh, the word of the Lord for us as a body of believers uh, for 2020. New wine, fresh oil, new wine skin. New wine, fresh oil, new wine skin. Let's say it together. New wine, fresh oil, new wine skin. So... Two ways we'll communicate this. Receive new wine and fresh oil for a new you. Receive new wine and fresh oil for a new you. Or I can put it like this. This is our side of the uh, uh, responsibility. Present yourself as a new wineskin to receive new wine and fresh oil present yourself as a new wineskin to receive new wine and fresh oil amen i will explain this in a few minutes but the worship team is going to help us sing a song that's that's in line with this and then we will be seated and we can receive uh, the full message here let's just sing Together, the worship team will help us. Thank you. All right, turn to your neighbor and say, it's a new season. It's a new day. Come on, come on, give them a I said, turn to your neighbors and say, it's a new season. Yeah? <laughs> it's a new day. A fresh anointing. Okay, don't, 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 don't say it to me. It's, uh, yeah, just don't say it. Fresh anointing is flowing my way. It's a season of power and prosperity. It's a new season coming to me. Amen? Amen. It's a new season. It's a new day. A fresh anointing is flowing my way. It's a season of power. And prosperity it's a new season coming to me can we sing that together church one two it's a new season come on now it's a new day can you give a little swag fresh anointing is flowing my way it's a season of 
of power and prosperity. It's a new season coming to. Okay, now let's sing it like we believe it, okay? It's a new season and it's a new day. A fresh anointing is flowing my way. It's a season of power and prosperity. It's a new season coming to me. Wait, Jerry, where'd you go? Tried in the fire, but you're coming out. Go, cling to his hand. Every promise is take a hold. It's a new season. It's Come a on, new let's season. Go on. All that was stolen is returned to you a hundredfold. Tried in the fire, but you're coming out. Go, cling to his hand. Every promise is take a hold. It's a new season. It's a new. It's season. a new season. Come on, let's sing it out. It's a new day. Fresh anointing is flowing my way. It's a season of power, prosperity. It's a new season coming to me. We are too stiff for the song, right? We can do a left and a little right. Is that okay? One, two, one, two, yeah. From the back to the front, everybody, yeah, just move to your right, to the left. Yeah, just feel it, okay? Come on, Ruth. <laughs> I will call you. <laughs> All right. Okay, now try and sing this. Sing. It's a new season. Come on. It's a new day. A fresh anointing. It's flowing my way Cause it's a season of power And prosperity Cause it's a new season Coming to me All that was stolen is returned to you a hundredfold Tried in the fire but you're coming out Go cling to his hand Every promise is take a hold Everybody, let's do this. Come on now. All that was stolen is returned to you a hundredfold. Tried in the fire, but you're coming out. Go, cling to his hand. Every promise is gonna take a hold. It's a new season. It's a new season. Come on, let's put our hands up in the air. It's a new day. A fresh Jesus, thank you. Turn, your, turn to your neighbor, please. Tell them, new wine, fresh oil, new wine skin. And you may be seated. Amen. You may be seated, please. Thank you, worship team. Thank you. So I want us to read a few scriptures and uh, we get into the message we take some time to pray and minister after that. Mark chapter 2, verses 18 to 22. Mark 2, Mark chapter 2, verses 18 to 22. You can read with me, please. The disciples of John and of the Pharisees were fasting. Then they came and said to him, why do the disciples of John and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? 
Verse 19, and Jesus said to them, can the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast in those days. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth and an old garment, or else the new piece pulls away from the old, and the tear is made worse. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, or else the new wine bursts the wineskins, the wine is spilled, and the wineskins are ruined. But new wine must be put into new wineskins. So let's say that again. New wine must be put into new wineskins. So that's this, the, the key verse here we're looking at. I also want to read a few uh, more verses. Psalm 92, verse 10. Psalm 92, verse 10. But my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. But my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will make, even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Amen? So let's try to understand what, what the Lord is placing before us when he's telling us new wine Fresh oil, new wineskin. Now, the analogy that used, Jesus used in the Gospels, in Mark, Mark 2 that we read, when he was talking, really, he was talking about the, uh, you know, the moving away of the old covenant, giving way to the new covenant. And he used this analogy of the wineskin, a new wine and wineskin. So, the wineskin really was uh, the hide of an animal, skin of an animal, leather and it was usually used to you know transport liquids whether it's water or oil or milk or uh, butter or uh, cheese or things like that and even wine so it was used as a container something to transport this was during bible times and so Jesus is using this picture to communicate something very important to his disciples. He says, you know, just like what they do, you, you put new wine into new wineskin. So when they wanted to ferment wine, they would put new wine into new wineskins because these new wineskins were strong and they could stretch. And during the fermentation process, uh, yeast would act on the sugars and carbon dioxide would be released. And so it's, it had to stretch, the wineskin had to stretch to accommodate those gases being released. And from time to time, you know, the person would come and release those gases. But if you put new wine into old wineskin, old wineskin was already stretched and by this time had become brittle. And so if it was going to be further stretched, it's just going to break. And the wine would be spilled, would be wasted. So that's the analogy Jesus is using to communicate spiritual truth or spiritual reality. He says, new wine must be put into new wine skin. So in 2020, that's the word that I, I just feel the Lord is telling us, look, I'm ready to bring new wine and fresh oil, but you must present yourself as a new wine skin. There is new wine. There is fresh oil. But God is not going to put new wine into old wine skin. He doesn't do that because he knows it's going to be wasted. So new wine is put into new wineskin. So you and I must present ourselves as new wineskins to God in order to receive the new wine and the fresh oil. So I'm going to take a few moments just to explain that. So what do we mean by new wineskin? A new wineskin means a new you. A new you. 
It means becoming a new you, allowing God to make you into a new person, a new you. So that he can then put the new wine into your life and release the fresh oil over you. Now when we say becoming a new you, we're not talking about just something superficial. All right, before I used to have long hair, now I cut it short or the other way, whatever. And we're not talking about something superficial. That's not it. We talk about you as a person, as who you are, and, and, and what you're doing in your engagement with God, that you become a new you, the new you that God wants you to be. We're not talking about becoming somebody that society tells you or somebody else tells you. We're talking about what God wants you to be, that you present yourself as a new wineskin. The new wineskin also talks to us about receiving new dispensers. Because that's what a wineskin was. It was a new, dis it was a dispenser. It was a container. It was carrying something. And so a new wineskin also represents new dispensers. Which means to us, new ways, new methods, new means, new strategies, new containers to receive and release God's new wine and fresh so God wants to release something new, but he's waiting for a new wineskin to be presented to him so that he can release new wine into that new wineskin so that, that then it can be released on the earth. Are you with me so far? So new wine represents a new you and also represents a new dispenser, a new container, which means a new way of doing things, a new strategy, a new means, a, a new uh, uh, methods that God may present to us. We allow God to restructure what we're doing so He can release what He wants to release in and through us. Now, there are different ways that God helps you become a new you. That God helps us to become a new wineskin. There are different ways by which God works in our lives. There is no one set method. But I want to highlight a few Ways that we know that God works in our lives in order to make us a new person. So that we can present to him a new wineskin. How are the, what are some of the ways that God works in us? Sometimes we discover new gifts, graces, and opportunities. That you didn't know existed in you or was available to you. A new grace, a new gift, or a new opportunity comes your way. And God is saying, go there. But that means there's something that you need to change. And you need to become somebody in order to respond to that grace, that gift, or that opportunity that has come your way. But you discover that. And God says, go with that. And you need to move with boldness and courage. Sometimes he redirects us. And he sets, on, sets us on sale on a course we didn't think we will take. He says, keep going. And again, we have to move boldly. He redirects us. Are you with me? And that redirection is really a process by which God is making you a new wineskin so that he can release new wine and fresh oil on your life for your good, but also for the good of others around you. He redirects. Sometimes he stretches us. We are put in situations where we have to do things that stretch our skills, our capabilities beyond what we are accustomed to. You see, even in nature, we see this. If something new is about to be released, something is being stretched. A good analogy is that of a woman's uterus. If she's going to give birth to a child, her uterus expands maybe 700 times the normal size. So something new is being released, but something is being stretched. Are you with me? So that's another way that God causes you to and me to become a new wineskin. He stretches us. And God, I'm comfortable with this. But God, just go further. Stretch yourself. And a new thing will be released. But that stretching is you becoming a new wineskin. Sometimes he uses time in the wilderness. Oh no. <laughs> we don't like it. But you know sometimes we think. 
wilderness, it always has a negative connotation. But really, wilderness is not a, 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 it's not a depressing place. That time in the wilderness is a time of separation, of silence, of solitude, of secret. But it's a time of great strengthening and of great empowering in the Holy Spirit. And sometimes God says, I need you in the wilderness for a while because I need you to become a new wineskin in order to receive the new wine, the fresh oil that I want on your life. So the time in the wilderness is not a depressing thing. It's a time when you are transitioning. And if you look at it in a positive way, it can be an exciting time. Are you with me? Because you're becoming a new wineskin in order to receive new wine and fresh oil. Now think about the Lord Jesus. When he transitioned from his normal everyday life, the first thing he did, he went to the river Jordan. He was baptized in water by John the Baptist. He was also baptized in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon him and rested on him. What was the next thing that happened? The Bible says, the Holy Spirit drove him into the wilderness. It wasn't the devil taking him there. It's the Holy Spirit. Oh God, I need you there. I need you out there in that place of silence, of solitude, of separation. But then when he comes out of that wilderness, the Bible says he came in the power of the Spirit. He was ready for the new season. Because he was transitioning from one to the other. Are you with me? And he had. To present himself as a new wineskin before God. So sometimes God uses this time in the wilderness to enable us to present ourselves as a new wineskin to him, to him so he can pour out that new wine and the fresh oil. Sometimes he takes us through a process of metamorphosis. Again, we see this in nature. The caterpillar it's been eating and eating and eating and eating and eating, enjoying, and suddenly it stops eating. So it's time for metamorphosis. <laughs> time for me to become a butterfly. And then you know the, the stages. It goes through the stages. And that caterpillar becomes a beautiful butterfly. But it goes through a process of metamorphosis. So God takes us through that. Now, you say, what could this mean? Like, I mean, I'm not going to hang upside down from a tree and you know, <laughs> draw a cocoon around me. No, sometimes this metamorphosis, it could look, look like this. That, you know, where God takes you to a time of training, of reskilling, of unlearning and relearning, of mentoring, of nurturing. That could be your time of metamorphosis. You are becoming something. Are you with me? And you're getting ready for the next phase where you will fly like a butterfly. There is new wine and fresh oil, but you're going through this metamorphosis. Now, we have to say this, that every time you become a new wineskin, somebody will not like it. Because they always like the old you. They're accustomed to the old you. They like the old you. You're becoming a new wineskin because God has new wine and fresh oil for you. But somebody's not going to like it. You might lose a few friends. You might get some negative comments. Why he was like this, he's becoming like this. Hey, you journey with God. Because God wants to release new wine and fresh oil. Not just for you. But for those who have been assigned to your life that you need to serve, that you need to, be, that you need to bless. Amen? You can't stay as the old wineskin because God will not pour out the new wine in old wineskins. He's not going to waste it. Amen? So, in this process of becoming a new wineskin, there could be times as you're going through the changes and you're going through whatever God is taking you through that 
people around you may not like it. You're becoming something different. No, no, no. I'm just becoming a new wine skin in order to receive this new wine and this fresh oil so that I can see the purposes of God released to bless people. Amen? So now, what is this new wine, fresh oil we're talking about very quickly? There is new wine for a new season. Now, wine in Scripture is often used as a symbol of God's blessing. You study Scripture, study wine in the Bible. God's blessing of grace, of joy, of prosperity, of covenant. We celebrate the covenant. And Jesus said, this wine and bread. So it represents covenant. It represents the goodness of God and the new things that come from God. You study wine in Scripture, and it's used as a, as a symbol. Now, we're not going to get into argument. Was it alcoholic, non-alcoholic? That's not the issue. I'm just talking about the symbol. Is that okay? So you say, well, what did you hear on New Year's Day? Why? <laughs> no, please. <laughs> we're only talking about it as a symbol. And in Scripture... Wine is used as a symbol of all of these things, of the grace of God, of the goodness of God, of the blessing of God, of covenant, of the new thing God wants to do. He uses wine as an analogy in all of these contexts, as a symbol. And so it represents this. So what does wine represent? New wine represents new things that God releases, that God is waiting to release through you. It could be a new blessing. It could be a new uh, idea, a new strategy, a new method, a new, uh, a new work that he wants to release through you. And so that new wine represents this new thing that God is waiting to release. In Isaiah 40, 43, verses 18 and 19, which we read, verse 19, God says, I will do a new thing. It's new to us, not to him. He knows it already. To us, it's new. I haven't seen God do that. Amen? And you know, when God does a new thing, what was in the past just a dream, what was in the past be out of your reach, becomes the new norm. Amen? Look at it. You're sitting there. I shared this many times. In the past, coming into this auditorium was only a dream. In the past, coming into this auditorium was outside our reach. Today, it's the new norm. We're going to be here every Sunday. Amen. Put your hands together. What was once just a dream, what was once beyond your reach, will become the new norm when God does a new thing. And nobody can stop it. People said it's beyond our reach. But it was just a dream. Wow, wouldn't it be nice to meet in that auditorium? And we tried several times. The answer was no. Today, this is our new norm. Where do you meet? Good Shepherd Auditorium. How often? Every Sunday. It's normal. <laughs> Amen. So when God does a new work, when God does a new thing, what was once just a dream, what was once beyond your reach, becomes your new norm. You walk in it. It's normal for us now. Amen. But for that, God is saying, I need you to present yourself as a new wineskin. I'm ready to do a new thing. But I need new wineskin. The new wine also represents a new work of the Spirit. Released in a new season. Again, wine is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. So it's a symbol. So the new wine represents a new work of the Spirit. And that's why we say fresh oil. Fresh oil. And as the psalmist said in Psalm 92, verse 10, which we read earlier, but my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. What does that mean? The horn, again, is a symbol. It's a symbol of strength, dominion, and influence. So in the Old Testament, when you see horn, and even in the New Testament, we read about horns. It's talking about strength, dominion, and influence. So the psalmist is saying, you have increased, you have exalted, means you have increased my strength, my dominion, and my influence like a wild ox. I mean, a strong, powerful horse, an ox. So like that, 
You have exalted. You have increased my strength, my dominion, my influence. How has it happened? You have anointed me with fresh oil. The fresh oil of the Holy Spirit causes this in our lives. It increases our strength, our dominion, our influence. So this new wine represents a new work of the Spirit, the fresh oil of the Holy Spirit. So take this word with you. As you begin 2020, new wine, fresh oil, new. I want to receive the new wine and the fresh oil, but I must present myself as a new. What does this mean to you personally? So think about it. Consider what this means to us. To think about this word, what it means to you personally. Take some time today or hopefully the next few days, to reflect new wine, fresh oil. New? What does it mean to me personally? God is waiting to release new wine, fresh oil through my life. But I must present myself as a new? What would it mean for me personally? Becoming this new you. Through a process that God will take you, whether He stretches you, whether He causes you to discover some gifts and grace and opportunity, whether He uh, gets you for a time in the wilderness, for whether He takes you through a, 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 a process of metamorphosis, how God works. And this is just, you know, it's not a complete uh, description of how God causes us to become new, gets us to be the next kind of person, the person He wants us to be, so He can release new wine and fresh oil. But you pray about it, God. What is this new wine, new oil, fresh oil you want to release through me? And what is this new wine skin you want to make me into, God? Let God paint a picture of that in your minds. Amen. Have a picture of that. This is what I'm going to be. This new wine skin that's taking place in my life. For us as a church, as a local church, corporately, I want to take a few moments just to address this. We as a church must be prepared to become a new wineskin in order to receive new wine and fresh oil. Amen? Every now and then, every six months or something, you send your car to the garage, oil change. <laughs> we as a church have to get ready for new wine and fresh oil. But we must present ourselves as a new wineskin. Because God will not put new wine in old. I'm not going to do that. So here's what I want to take a few moments and talk to us about. You see, we cannot continue doing the same things. Or let me say this first. We pray for new wine and fresh oil. But we present the old wineskin. So you and I can pray as much as we want, shout as much as we want, do whatever. But if we are not presenting a new wineskin, God will not put out new wine. It's going to be wasted. Are you with me? So... We cannot continue doing the same things and expect different results. That's the definition of insanity. Right? <laughs> we can't keep doing the same things and expect different results. We've got to be ready for change. We've got to be ready to present ourselves as a new wineskin. You know, sometimes we write down our goals which obviously, hopefully, are bigger and higher than the previous year. And then we go back and we do the same things that we were doing last year. And we're expecting more. But you're doing the same thing last year. Not going to happen. You keep running 100 meters and say, I'm training for the marathon. Rather, you run 100 meters as much as you want. But that's not going to help you train for the marathon. Got to do something equal to the task, equal to the goal. 
to go to change. So we got to do new things to reach new goals. We got to do things differently to see different results. We must allow God to make us the new wine skin so we can receive his new wine and fresh oil. Are you with me? So I want to put these four things before us. And I'm not putting these out as commandments. I'm putting these out as invitations for us as a church. So uh, if you get scared, please come back. <laughs> it's not a compulsion. It's just an invitation. So that we as a congregation, as a community, can present ourselves to God as a new wine skin and say, God, we are willing to step things up. We are willing to go up higher because we want new wine and fresh oil. Amen? So, number one. I want to invite all of us to fast and pray every Friday. It's okay? <laughs> that we as a church, number one, we will fast and pray every... Now, if Friday doesn't work, you want to do it on Tuesday, it's okay. It's all right. I'm just putting this out as an invitation that we can fast and pray as a church. Every Friday. You miss a meal or miss two meals. Whatever is good for you. Right? Again, uh, this is not the 11th commandment. <laughs> it's an invitation. Okay? You're not putting us under the law. But you understand, you know, the whole context of this new wineskin was spoken when the subject was about fasting. How come your disciples don't fast? And Jesus said, in that day, that means after I'm gone, they will do it. And then he spoke about this new wine and new wine skin. Yes, he was talking about the old and the new covenant, but the setting was also there about fasting. So I want to invite us as a church. Uh, we're not necessarily we're not going to gather together in one place. You know, all of us have our responsibilities. We'll be going about our everyday uh, work, uh, but we will fast on Fridays. Skip a meal or two if you can do two meals. That's great, uh, and uh, take some time to pray. And I want us to pray for these four things, for us as a church. Are you with me? We'll give it to you in print and also by email, of course. But uh, these four things. First, we'll pray for maturity. When we say maturity, the biblical definition of Christian maturity is Christ-likeness. That's it. It's one word. So God, that we as a community will grow into Christ-likeness. That's what we're all about. Amen. That's why we come. That's why we pray, worship, so that God can change us to become more and more like Jesus. That's maturity. So number one, pray. Say, God, that we as a church community will grow in Christ-likeness. Number two, we pray for miracles. And we'll see God increase miracles of healings, of deliverances, of provision that will meet the needs of people who come in here, God. So they will know that you are God. So pray that they will see miracles, healings, deliverances, God's provision, blessing individuals, families, and businesses at APC. God, we pray for miracles. And we're getting wonderful testimonies. I'll share some more every, you know, on Sundays. Uh, we're getting wonderful tes testimonies of what God is doing. Like people know God is real. He's working in our lives. Are you with me? So, so God, we want to see more and more of this. We want to see God, the blind see, the deaf hear, the dumb speak, the lame walk. We want to see cancer see. We want to see the dead raised. We want to see Jesus be Jesus in his church. Amen. We are the body of? Let's try it again. Whose body are we? The body of? Was Christ a healer? Was he a deliverer? Was he a miracle worker? Whose body are we? The body of? So that's got to happen here because we are his body. Amen? Because God, we want to see this. Number three, we pray for multiplication. God, so this year, putting out a challenge for all of us, we want to see each of our locations double. Amen? Okay, let's try that again. We want to see each of our locations double. Amen? And I was listening to the it's the testament of Reynard Bonke. Some of you know Reynard Bonke, the great evangelist. Uh, he went home to be with the Lord a couple of weeks back. And uh, 
he was sharing in his, in his life story how in the early days when he began his ministry in Africa, you know, there'd be like five people sitting in his meeting. And I said, God, I came here, what's happening? But then he, he said, like, as he began a journey, there was one particular campaign he talks about where in one meeting, one, and I may get the number a little wrong, I can't remember exactly, but in one meeting, one million 600,000 people made a decision for Christ. One meeting. It's huge, huge, huge. But where did he start? Talking to those five people. Then God raised him and God did such a work that there were more than a million people in one service making those decisions. And he reports that 55 million decisions made in one decade. They counted. This was 2001 to uh, 2009. 55 million decisions for Jesus Christ. Amen? Can God do something like that? Amen? Does God want people in Bangalore City to be saved? Does he want us to be the chosen frozen now that we've come into an AC hall? <laughs> or is he still interested in the people outside? Of course. A heart must cry out for the millions of people in Bangalore City who don't know Jesus. Amen? So say, God, we want to multiply. We want all our locations to multiply. We want to see people come to Jesus Christ, come to faith in Christ, encounter the real Jesus and be saved and be brought into the kingdom of God. And no force of man, no power of hell can stop it. Nothing can stop it. But we must pray. Are you with me? And number four, we pray for all the ministries of the church. Say, God, we want you to work through the ministries to impact our city, our nation, and the nations. The various ministries, the various things that are happening. Of course, you may not remember everything, but whatever God reminds you of that day, you pray for those ministries. So what's the first thing to become a new one skin? Are you going to fast and pray? Fridays? Is it okay? Pray for these four things. Pray for maturity, for miracles, multiplication, and... We chose them all M so you can remember that easily. <laughs> you with me so far? Okay. We have to present ourselves as a new wine skin to God. Second, each of us, I want to invite each one of us to share Jesus with at least one person every week. So, oh no, this is getting really tough. <laughs> no. no, that's why we're here. To share Jesus. So I want you to think about it. Every week, share Jesus with somebody. You say, but I don't, I don't meet people. Just, just, you don't, just go out on the street. And you, you know, maybe you're in the grocery store. Talk to somebody. And we are going to give you the tools. We have tracts available outside. Uh, we'll be releasing a new tool, uh, hopefully in January. That will really help all of us to share the gospel. But you can, can start off using our tracts. Use whatever. Just share Jesus with people. Attend the weekend school. If you say, I don't know how to share Jesus, attend the weekend school on lifestyle evangelism. Learn how to share the gospel. Learn what is the gospel, how to share the gospel. It equip you. Go share. All of us, every week, at least one person. Take it up as a challenge. You say, Pastor, 10 years I haven't shared with one person. Now you're telling me once a week, yeah, take it up. Break out of those limitations. Amen. Be intentional about it. Then you'll start doing it. You and I will start doing it. Every week, one person. Talk to them about Jesus. Now, whether they make a commitment or not, that is not in our control. And we're not forcing people. We can't force. But just a word about Jesus to somebody. You may get a, a sentence out. You may get a message out. You may get five minutes with that person. That's great. But share Jesus with at least one person in the course of one week. Can we all do that? Doesn't sound very convincing. Can we all do that? Amen. <laughs> that was a yes from somebody. <laughs> One person every week. And we'll keep reminding you for it so that, you know. Uh, <laughs> number three, <laughs> invite at least two people to church every month. 
How about that? It's doable. Say, Pastor, <laughs> New Year's Day, go easy. <laughs> All right, so that's number three. Invite at least two people to church every month. Every month. Think about it. God, start praying. Show me how long. Who should I invite? It might be a stranger you meet. You didn't wait. You know, last, uh, uh, on Sunday, Amy met somebody. They said, you know, somebody out there on MG Road invited me to church. And that was, of course, our team. Ravli and her team, they were out there on MG Road singing and all of that. And that person said, I, I felt this person inviting me was genuine. So I came. Amen? Somebody invited a stranger. But the stranger came. I don't know if they're here this morning, but that person came on Sunday to church. Just an invitation. They felt this person is genuine. I, I want to follow up on it, see what this is about. They came to church. So if you and I can do at least two people a month, invite them. I'm not saying invite people from other churches. No, that's a no-no. Okay, so don't go and invite all your friends from other churches now. Let them be there. We're talking about people who don't go to church, don't know Jesus. Invite them. It could be a stranger or a friend, but they're not going to any church. Invite them. We want them to encounter God and be ministered to. Are you with me? So first, let's all try to fast once a week on Fridays and pray for these four things. Second, Share Jesus to at least one person every week. Number three, invite at least two people to church every month. Number four, as a church, we move into spontaneous flow with the Holy Spirit. See, uh, we like order, and God likes order. God is a God of order. He's a God who likes things in place, and so we try to have all of that. Uh, but also there is this other side where God wants to move freely, spontaneously. So, we do not gather around a certain form or order of service or a set structure. Uh, while we have order, we want to give the Holy Spirit freedom to move as He wills. Are you with me? So we want to be more open uh, to the spontaneous flow of the Holy Spirit in our worship, in our fellowship, in our equipping, in our ministry, in all that we do. We want to be more open. So corporately, when we come together, we want to just give room for the Holy Spirit. Spirit of God, have your way. Yes, we, we will start on time. But the rest of it, we want to set our clocks to the Holy Spirit. Amen? So when we say we start at 10.30, we mean 10.30, not 11.15. Right? 10.30, be here. Or the other locations, 8 o'clock. You, you be there on time. But when we minister, we are together, we want, the, be, we want to be spontaneous. Holy Spirit, you lead us. You move us. Take us forward. And the same thing in our fellowship, in our relationships as well. Uh, be spontaneous. You know, we do have life groups, and you know, those are set times and set places where people meet, and that's good. That's important. But also want to encourage you, be spontaneous. Maybe the Holy Spirit put somebody on your heart. Call that person and say, hey, can I meet with you? Say, but I didn't check with pastor. I didn't talk to the life group leader. Forget it. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be spontaneous. Let the Holy Spirit move you. That you need to reach out to somebody or you meet somebody. Or go have a, you know, a coffee with somebody or go have a lunch with somebody. Or take somebody out for lunch. Or that person is in need. Give that person something. So, but I need to check with, okay, yeah, sometimes you need to be careful. You don't want to, you know, uh, uh, do something wrong. And if you're in doubt, you check. But if the Holy Spirit is leading you to bless somebody, bless them. Let's be spontaneous. Flowing with the Holy Spirit as a people. Are you with me? You pray. Holy Spirit, how do you want me to serve you? Serve Jesus today. Is there somebody that I can bless? And God may put somebody in your heart. Maybe you call that person. Maybe you go meet that person. Maybe you bless that person with something. Whatever. 
but be spontaneous even in our relationships in our in our interactions with people let's give the holy spirit room to move i want to close with this verse in isaiah 65 verse 8 it says new wine is found in the cluster so if you take a grape by itself and squeeze it get a few drops but if you want to get juice you need the cluster new wine is found in the cluster so that's us community that's a beautiful picture of community but it's got to be a god breathed community it's not it's not something superficial not something that we force but let the holy spirit move us to be that cluster of people where there is new wine amen so like this i want you to think for your own personal life what is god saying to you about new wine fresh oil new wine skin there is new wine and fresh oil that god will release to us this will happen when we present ourselves as a new wine skin so we can receive what he is releasing amen let's rise to our feet please i call our worship team up we're going to take some time to pray i want to just pray over us as a body as a congregation as you just go back and reflect on these things i'm pray and say lord speak to me he is your god he's your guide he's your counselor he will speak to you he will show you what is a new wine that he wants to release through you what is a fresh oil in which area does he want to release this fresh anointing of his spirit to increase your dominion your influence your strength he will speak to you but in response remember we have a responsibility to present ourselves as new wine skin god i'm ready help me journey with you through the process how will you take me you might redirect me you might help me discover some gifts and graces you might stretch me you might take me through a process of metamorphosis and change i didn't expect it god however this is i'm willing because if i present myself as a new wine skin there will be new wine and fresh oil Amen. I want to just pray over us. As I pray, will you join your heart with me and receive? Father, I stand here in the name of your son Jesus. And I pray over people gathered here this morning and those who are watching us live wherever people are receiving this word. You're the God who releases new wine. and fresh oil. Yet the God who does that, Father. Lord, there are new things that you want to release in us, for us and through us. There is new wine. There is fresh oil. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit will speak to each one of us. the anointing within us will speak to us show us what is the new wine what is that fresh oil you're waiting to release upon us and through us through each one of us what is that new thing what is that new work you want to release to us lord speak holy spirit to your people open our eyes to see open our ears to hear open our hearts to understand and lord also pray you'll show us each one of us personally how to present ourselves as a new wine skin to become the new you to become the new person speak to us lord by your holy spirit May each person here receive from you that understanding, that direction, that word, that instruction. May each person hear from you. Thank you.
give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's just worship God for a while. Just sing softly in the spirit. Oh God, we worship you. There is new wine. There is fresh oil. And we worship you. Roshan, just sing a new song. Something that's worshipful. Sing a new song. Thank you. Lord. Let's just... Just open your mouth, speak, sing in the Spirit, sing in the Holy Spirit, sing in the Spirit. I will pour my spirit on all flesh. I will pour my spirit on all flesh. I will pour my spirit on your sons and your daughters, on the young and the old. I will not hide my face any longer. I will pour out. There will be an outpouring of my spirit, says the Lord. I will not hide my face any longer. I will not hide my face any longer. I will pour out my spirit over you, over you. You have broken your alabaster jar. Now I will break myself over you. I will break myself over you. I will pour out everything about me over you. Over you. You will start smelling like me. My fragrance will be over you, says the Lord. My fragrance will be over you. It is time for me to break my alabaster jar so I will break myself over you. Because everybody around you will know that I have been with you and you have been with me. So fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil. Wonders is the Lord. I will show you my wonder because 
I am the wonder of wonders. I am the wonder of wonders. Your eyes will behold my beauty. Your eyes will behold my beauty, says the Lord. Now I will show you my ways. You've seen my deeds. Now I will show you my ways. Come on, just let's press in a little bit more. Pray for one another. As you pray, God may give you a word of prophecy. If they need healing, pray for their healing. If they're going through a difficulty, just pray that God would deliver them. Just ask them, is there something I can pray for you? Turn around now. If you don't want to pray, that's okay. But just minister. God wants to work through you. Lord, in this place, let your healing flow. Let your power flow. Just include somebody if they're not they're not being prayed for, just include them in your prayer. Join hands two or three.
let your healing flow, God. Let healing take, take place. Let miracles take place. Thank you, God. Thank you. going to we're going to distribute our ushers are going to distribute the what we usually do our magnets with the word of the Lord so ushers you could go ahead and distribute that uh, we usually say one per family we assuming you have one refrigerator at home <laughs> but if you have two and you need two you can take two uh, but usually it's one per family so our ushers will distribute that. One more announcement. Uh, uh, we need to leave this hall uh, clean. So in case something has fallen, a piece of paper or a pen or anything, uh, please pick it up. If there is trash, please don't put it under the chair. Please take it out with you and there will be you know, dispensers outside so you can get rid of it. So we need to leave this auditorium uh, really clean. So uh, please just look around if there's any trash, uh, you know, whether you have dropped or somebody else dropped, just, just help clean it up uh, on our way out. Amen. We're going to sing. It's a new season. And declare that we are ready for new wine, fresh oil, and we are ready to present ourselves as new wine skins. Our ushers, please go ahead and distribute those magnets. We're going to sing. It's a new season. And right after that, you're free, uh, you're, you're dismissed. Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for what you've done. And in the name of Jesus, Lord, let your blessing rest on your people. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit prevail and be with each of us always in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So a big thank you to all of you who've joined us live from around the world for this special January 1st, 2020 service. Remember the word of the Lord, uh, new wine, fresh oil, new wine skin. Look forward for the new things that God is going to release to you, the new wine that he wants to pour upon you, uh, the fresh oil of his spirit that will come upon your life as you present yourself to him as new wine skins. Remember, a new season requires a new you. God's ready to do new things.